Hello everyone and welcome to Sun Up. I'm Lyndall Stout. We join you today from the Tulsa State Fair where young people from 30 Oklahoma counties have entered more than 2,500 4-H and FFA projects this year. Categories like woodworking and fashion, industrial arts and everything in between. We'll have much more from the fair a little later in the show. But first, let's take a look at some timely management advice for your hay meadow. This is a hay meadow that was, that was cut back in late June at the proper time of year. And uh, it's in really good shape and it's gonna be very productive. This is the way you ought to take care of it. But there's a problem for next year's hay production. And that is we've got all this standing dead growth, all the seed heads, that if we don't do something with this, they're going to be in next year's hay, which is really going to reduce the quality. So we need to come up with an idea on how to, how to manage that. Now you will see people out cutting hay right now, which is a really bad idea, but some people continue to do that. Cutting at this late really impacts the growth next year. In other words, we're going to hurt the growth. But as this starts to turn brown and red, the forage quality drops off even more. But when this goes dormant, then what you do to it really doesn't matter. So we're kind of in that transition zone right now. The benefit to burning is you're just going to get this dead material off and the plant community will spawn very favorably. But if you happen to have cattle that are available that you need to feed during the winter, you've got standing dead growth or what we would call, we've got stockpiled forage out here. So with a protein supplement, uh, cows, particularly dry cows, would do very, very well out here over the winter. Dave, this time of year with hay meadows in transition, what kind of concerns do you have out here? This hay meadow is, as Dr. Bidwell mentioned, is in really good shape. There's an incredible, incredible amount of regrowth from all the moisture that we had this summer. And so for this producer, the question is, well, what to do now? Should they come in and, and harvest this material, take a second crop, or uh, should they consider grazing it? You know, or as, as he mentioned, should they burn it? And, you know, it's a tremendous resource. You hate to see it go to waste. Uh, but there are forage quality considerations. If we were to take a hay crop off of, of this particular hay meadow now with it all having gone uh, to seed, uh, basically, you know, it's all flowered as you can see, uh, the quality is going to be low because of those stems. And that's something that you look, can look closely. Some of this then would mix back in with, with new growth in the spring? Well, I, I think you would want to do something with it before that because if if you were to leave this, as Dr. Bidwell mentioned, and harvest it next summer, you know, you're dealing with the material here right now in the stem that's probably right now in the neighborhood of 40% digestible to a cow. This leaf, even though it started to discolor a little bit, is still probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 55 to 60% in digest digestibility to the cow. Uh, by next summer, these, these won't be there anymore. They will degrade over the winter, but these stems will, they may be laying down by them, but they'll still, most of them will still be there. And so what you wind up having is a real dilution effect on the quality of your hay. So it, it just wouldn't be very good quality hay at all. And that's why Dr. Bidwell recommends that we do something uh, to keep that from happening. So then if we're weighing the options of a late hay harvest versus grazing, how do you figure that out? I would, I would consider um, certainly the, the grazing option uh, this, this fall or winter for a situation like this where you have just tremendous uh, forage availability out here. And the reason I would consider a grazing, or I, I lean towards the grazing option more, Number one, as we mentioned, the quality of the hay is, is not going to be very good. Uh, custom baling is going to cost around $30 a bale, and of course that will vary from, from producer to producer, but uh, so it's going to be an, an expensive option. But then if you, if you lightly graze a hay meadow like this and um, let the cows select their diet instead of feeding them a round bell where they don't have the opportunity quite to be as selective. You know, they right now, at least now until February or March, they can select these leaves and the cows are really good at that. And that's one thing they're very good at. And so they can select a diet that's very high in digestibility. You might need to feed just a little bit of protein supplement to go with it. 
uh, to, have to encourage forage intake and digestibility. But they'll make good use of a resource like this. Okay, some great advice as we're transitioning this time of year. Dave Lawman, thanks a lot. Thank you.